Young Show. Hello. You all know the expression, don't be satisfied with second best. Well, that seems like a good and noble ambition, wouldn't you say? Of course, the difficulty is, uh, who is to say what is second best for us? The young woman you're about to see is called Janet Height, with her husband, Greg. How do I look? Ravishing? Yeah. Hmm? Done up pretty fancy, aren't you? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Not for the wife of a rising young executive. An unemployed young executive. Oh. And for the fourth time in six years, and each time with less salary, I'm beginning to think I don't belong anywhere, Jan. Oh, darling. Don't talk like that. It's just that we haven't found the job that's good enough for you. But... After tonight, we may not be able to say that anymore. Jan. Hmm? You got something cooking again? <laughs> Sweetie, you know how things happen. Contacts. Oh, no, they don't fill those high echelon jobs through the personnel department. No? No. It's all done over a martini. And, uh, who have you got as a target for tonight? Oh! Don't be silly. Gladys and Johnny are coming, and, uh, Jim and Helen, and, uh, And? Mr. R.B. Weldon. R.B. Weldon? Uh-huh. You're shooting pretty high, aren't you, Jim? Well, he did say the other night at John's that he hoped to see us again. And I figured nothing ventured, nothing gained, and he's coming. Well, you never miss an opportunity. Nope. Not where you're concerned. Gee, and I've never sold real estate. Oh, darling, you're not going to be a salesman. No, he needs a promotion manager. How do you know? Well, I just know, and that's all I'm going to tell you. Mr. Weldon needs a promotion manager. A promotion manager for what? Wonderland Valley. The beautiful, big, new development. Oh, Greg, you're just perfect for that job. I know it. And I'll bet you my bottom dollar, Mr. Weldon will think so, too, after tonight. Mommy, you look beautiful. Oh, thanks, sweetie. Oh, you kids are supposed to be in bed, mine. What are you eating? I don't know. It tastes awful. It's caviar. Oh, honey, you've been in the hors d'oeuvres. I don't like them. Well, little boys aren't supposed to like them. Now, go on to bed, you two. We've already said good night two or three times. Good night. What about our story? We're having guests. And Daddy doesn't have time to read your story, okay? Jan, it'll just take five minutes. Please, dear, they'll be here any second. Please, Tommy. Okay. Honey. Mick, old man, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll read you two stories tomorrow. How's that? But I want one tonight. Mary, will you take over for me and read Mick a story? Sure, Daddy. Don't worry. Come on, Mick. Never mind. I'll wait till tomorrow. Come on. Okay, okay. I was planning on their being asleep before the guests arrive, and I guess you can't have everything. You ready? Yep, I'm all ready. Good. Oh, where's your rosette? Oh, I'm not going to wear that. Oh, why not? Well, I'm just not. Oh, darling, it represents the Congressional Medal of Honor. Darling, I'm not going to cash in on it. Well, aren't you proud of it? Yes. Too proud to use it like that. Oh, well, now, don't be silly. I mean, after all, if you've earned a wonderful honor like that, I think the least you could do is to wear it. Particularly when there's a potential boss to be impressed? Oh, honey... Gee, they gave it to you to wear, not to hide away in a silly little box like that on your dresser. Oh, please, darling, wear it for me. Hmm? It makes me so proud to see it on you. All right. Let me get it. Here. Yeah. And listen, dear. Thanks. Well. Don't let Jim glom, Mr. Weldon, tonight. You know how aggressive Jim is all the time. Well, Jim can't help it. He's made that way. Well... It's our house, and it's our party, and if there's any glomming going on, I want you to do it, all right? You're quite a little canary. <laughs> huh? mm. oh, there we are. Oh. Darling, Mrs. Weldon, you care for an hors d'oeuvre? Smoked oysters are delicious. Oh! Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, Susie, would you Hi. like an hors d'oeuvre? Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm glad it. Okay, here goes my diet. <laughs> Get a load of that gym. He's 
let Mr. Weldon out of that corner since they arrived here. Mm -hmm. And the outfit is capitalized at something less than $15,000. Say, Jan, that reminds me. Yeah. I, I heard about an opening that Greg might be interested in. Where? Well, it's at the Conroy Loan Company. Oh, no, honey, no. That's, that's too small time for Greg. I don't think you'd be interested. Well, I, I just thought I'd tell you. Yeah, that's all right. Listen, I'm going to break that thing up. Right. Okay, you go sure. ahead. Darling. He's doing it. In a minute. Hello, you two. <laughs> I'm afraid I've neglected you. No, not really. Come sit down, Mr. Weldon. Thank you. You must be tired after working all day. Would you like an hors d'oeuvre? <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, please, they're very nice. Well, I'll try one of these. Good. 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 Now, as I was saying, the financial structure is so complicated that almost any fool. Jim, would, would you be an angel and pass these for me? I haven't had a chance to relax myself yet. <laughs> sure, Jan. Thank you. I'd be delighted. Thank you. Oh, dear, you need a refill. Uh, Greg, would you bring the martinis, honey? No, I can get oh, it. No, 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 he'll bring them over. Uh, do you smoke, Mr. Wilder? Oh, yes, thank you very would you much. Would you like one of these? Thank you. Ah, here we are. Shall I get you a match? No, I have a lighter. Oh, thank you. Huh. I'll take that, dear. Oh, thanks. You can begin glomming. Uh, that's just a family joke, Mr. Weldon. <laughs> Do Would you mind it? passing these for me, huh? Well, uh, Jim, wouldn't you like a fresh drink? Sure. Good Gosh, idea. Gosh, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. How have you been? We haven't seen much of you lately. Oh, same old story, working too hard. Mm. What's new with you two? Oh, nothing much. Uh, would you like to put your own ice in? Sure. I understand Greg resigned from Associated Projects. Oh, well, that was no place for Greg. They didn't appreciate him there. Oh, I'm surprised. They're an up-and-coming outfit. Well, it, it uh, just didn't work out the way we expected it to. I see. <laughs> well, it's nice for Greg to have you in his corner. <laughs> Why wouldn't I be? I'm his wife. And his manager. But then I suppose most wives are ambitious for the husbands. Hmm? Yeah, I suppose. But it's uh, something special with us. You see, Greg and I have a dream to live up to. We've had it ever since we were first married. It's something very special. It means a certain kind of house, a certain kind of friends, a, well, a certain standard, you know. And it's going to come true for us because we're not going to be satisfied with second best. Well, I'll say this for him. He's a lucky man to have a wife like you behind him, pushing him. Oh, Jim. Well, that's a very unattractive word. Do you like guiding life better? Yes, I do. I'm glad to have had this talk, Greg. Wanted to know you better ever since I heard you speak at the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Mr. Weldon. We were all proud of you there. You're very kind. I said then, nothing's too good for our returning hero. <laughs> we're not making a quota. Mr. Weldon had hoped for a quicker return on his money, so we've got to do better. But I still insist that we have a responsibility to the people who are going to live in these houses. Now, most of our prospects are going to be young people and G.I.s. So please, no misrepresentation. It won't do, Craig. It won't do at all. If you'll just be a little more patient, Mr. Weldon, eventually we'll find the right people for these homes. And eventually I'll go broke. I can't talk to my investors about the right people for the right homes. They just want figures. Black figures, not red ones. I'm sorry, Greg. You're a great guy. But I need a promotion man, not a social worker. So you'll just have to make up your mind right now. Which is it going to be? Oh, darling, I'm glad you're home. You can help me decide which one of these materials I want to use on the couch. Come on over here, I want to show you. Now look, you like this one? Or do you like this one? See? Jan, I, I'm afraid you'll have to give up the redecorating for a while. Greg? You've been fired again, haven't you? Yep. Well, why? I want to know why. Well, it seems I'm a great guy, but I'm just not a promotion manager, that's all. Exactly what that means, I don't know. But I can guess. Yeah, so can I. Now, I want to ask you something. Exactly what did Mr. Weldon say? Well, I mean, did he give you a choice of any kind? Oh, sure, sure, he gave me a choice. Uh-huh. Either I could con those G.I.s into buying homes way beyond their means, or else I could get out. Oh, 
darling, does everything have to be so black and white with you? Can't you just once in a while... No, darling, I can't. Oh, it's just... Against my principles, that's all. Well, that's all very lovely and noble and all that sort of thing. But what about us and what about our bills and what about our plans? And, Greg, what about our dream? Well, the dream again, huh? Yes, that dream again. We are not going to give it up, not for one minute. Well, it's time the kids were getting out of school. I'm going to pick them up. Gladys, me. Uh, remember the other evening you mentioned a job you thought Greg might be interested in? Yeah, uh, what was the name of that firm again? Conroy Loan Company. Uh, Mr. Stevenson, this is Gregory Hyde of Conroy Loan. I suppose you know why we're calling. Oh, I'm awfully sorry to hear that. How old is he? And you know, I've got a boy about that age myself. How long will he be in the hospital? Let's see. Mr. Stevenson, don't you worry about it. I'll talk to Mr. Conroy and see what we can do. Not at all. Yes, Mr. Conroy? You through work for the day, Greg? Almost, but there's something I wanted to talk to you about. Well, I've got something to talk to you about. Get in here right away. It's important. Yes, sir. Janet! In here, Gladys! Hi there! Hi. You know, it's time for a coffee break, and I have also brought some donuts. Oh, boy, am I glad we live next door to you. <laughs> You've got time to stop for a while, haven't you? Well, take time. You know, it's my contention that housewives deserve a coffee break more than secretaries do. You're so right. <laughs> Good, my favorite kind. Yeah. Good for you. My hips won't take it. Ah. Well, what's the latest on the grapevine? Why, uh, nothing at our house. Anything new around here? Eh, same old thing. Nothing exciting. I, I wanted to come over last night. In fact, we both did, and then John thought maybe it wouldn't be such a good idea. Well, why not? Oh, honey, you know we love to have you two any time. Yes, but I... Gladys, something's bothering you. What is it? Go on out with it. Well, John heard about it last night. I'm, I, I'm terribly sorry, and... Is there anything we can do? About what? About Greg losing his job. Of course, he'll get another one. He always does. Well, he's never been out of work very long now, isn't that true? I didn't know anything about him, Greg. Oh, you, you mean Greg hasn't told you? No. Oh, golly, I, I could cut my tongue right Oh, that's out. all right. Forget about it. It isn't your fault. <laughs> Well, now, now, look, Jan, maybe there's some mistake. No, no, honey, there's, there's no mistake. I'm sure of that. Well, but why do you suppose he didn't tell you last night? I don't know why he didn't tell me. I, I guess he was embarrassed. It's happened so many times before. Jan, why do you suppose that Greg loses so many jobs? Well, it's not Greg's fault. He works like a dog, honestly, he does. It's not his fault. That's just what I've been thinking. Look, Jan, there are some women who are very lucky and they marry good, gentle men and then before you know it, they turn right around and try to change them. Now, Greg is a good, gentle man. But besides that, he has great courage and unusual integrity. And in case you don't know it, those are pretty rare qualities these days. Jan, stop trying to change him. I'm not trying to change him, Gladys. I'm, I'm just trying to help him. Surely a wife has the right to help her Honey, husband. Honey, are you helping or are you hurting him? 
pushing him into somebody else's shoes. If you keep on like this, Jan, you'll never find success. Sorry, I have to be the one to say these things to you, but I... See you later, huh? Yeah. target for tonight. There are some women who are lucky enough to marry good, gentle men. Are you helping him or are you hurting him? Jan, don't keep trying to change him. You like uh, guiding light better? you outside playing, huh? I got tired. I was reading in my room, and I heard you. Are you sure you're all right, Mama? <laughs> I'm all right, dear. I'm sorry. You run long back now, so I should book. I'll be all right. Are you really all right? Yes, darling, I'm sorry. Go ahead, now. Be a good girl. Okay, huh? Mama. Mommy, will you hear my reading? Yes, honey. Go ahead. Now, men, said he, do you hear me? There was no answer from the forecastle. It's to you, Abraham Gray. It's to you I am speaking. Still no reply. Gray, resumed Mr. Smalley a little louder. I'm leaving the ship. I know you are. Hi, honey. Oh. Hi. Hi, Gary. Did you have a hard day? Yeah. Would there be any cold beer? Hi, Daddy. Hey, oh. hi, you two. Oh, you been good today? Yeah. Oh. Did you oh. see the sun, Daddy? Everything's all red. Yeah, it's beautiful. I saw it on the way in. But it doesn't last very long, does it? A thing of beauty. It's a joy forever. Hey, where'd you hear that? I heard Mommy say it. Didn't you, Mommy? Mm-hmm. I heard Daddy say it. <laughs> what is it? Well, it's the first line of a poem. What kind of a poem? Well, a very nice poem by, thank you, darling, by John Keats. It's called Endymion. What's the rest of it? Well, let me see. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. But will keep, it still will keep, a bower for us. And a sleep full of gentle dreams and health and quiet breathing. How can you remember all these poems? Some things come easy. Uh, kids, I think it's time you went off to bed now. Doc, come on. Off to bed. You take that, Mary. Put it over on the table. Atta boy. Here we go. First stop. Mm -hmm. Bye, sweetie. Good night. Sleep well. Yeah. Mommy. Mm hmm Everything's all right now, isn't it? I knew it would be when Daddy got home. Good night, Mommy. Good night, sweetie. There we go, Mickey. Good night, boy. Good night. Pleasant dreams. <sighs> Jan. Greg. I already know about it. Oh? How? Great fine. Why were you so late in coming home? 
You weren't afraid to come home, were you? <sighs> no, Jan. I'm not quite such a failure as you think right now. I don't think you're the failure at all. That's good. I was late getting home because I was out getting another job. Oh, darling, really? What kind? Tell me all about it. Well, Jake Hollister is starting a new armored car company. Yeah. Now, he needs 16 guards and four cars to start with. I go on salary this coming Monday. As what? Captain. It doesn't pay a lot right now, but it will pay more as the company grows. Oh. Well, uh, can we live on it? Not this way. Oh. But, Jan. Yes? This is the kind of job I can really do. I, I won't have to love merchandise or sell it any way I can. And I won't always have to question my motives. Well, you want this job, don't you, Greg? Yes, I do. I've done some of the groundwork already. Oh? We've uh, sent out telegrams to some of the, of the best men I could still find from my company C. I know how they operate under pressure and discipline. Mm -hmm. I know something else, too, Jan. It hasn't been easy for a lot of them, either. By 5 o'clock tonight, we had six answers, three of them accepting. Gadowski, Rogers, and Callahan. Callahan. <laughs> Jan, I, I'm going to have to wear a uniform. What kind of a uniform? A bank guard's uniform. A bank guard? Does that embarrass you? Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, is it absolutely necessary? Yes, it is, Jan. It bothers you, doesn't it? Well, uh, it... <laughs> well, when, when do you get this uniform? I've already got it. You have? You want to see it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> there we are. It's very nice material, and but of course you you you'd look good in any kind of a uniform. Uh -huh. but, Greg, I I just can't see a man coming home from work to a house like this in a neighborhood like this in in a bank guard uniform. That's all. Greg, that's it. The uniform it doesn't go with the house. That's right, Jan. It's either the uniform or the house. This uniform doesn't go with our way of living. No, it doesn't. Jan, don't you see? This is something real. This represents the kind of wage earner I can really be. Darling, the house is part of a dream. Yes. Yes, I know. Dream can have a silly dream right now, doesn't it? I think so. Jan. Yes? If we sell this house, we'll be able to pay off all our debts and still have enough to make a down payment on a smaller house. What do you say? Is that what you want? Yes. Okay, then, let's do it. <gasps> Darling, I'm sorry for your sake that our big dream hasn't worked out. Well, I know. <laughs> I know. You know, for years now, We've been dreaming somebody else's dream. And now we can start being ourselves again and dream our own dreams. <laughs> and we're going to be happy doing it, too, aren't we? You bet we are. We believe this is more than a truism. You as you are are better by far than the you you are trying to be. Well, good night. See you next week.